All right. Hopefully everything's working all right. First time doing a build video as such. We have the Gank Multi Rotors 3 inch HD Nemesis that we're going to be building. Comes in a pretty little package. I got the 25 millimeter standoffs on this, so uh, that will give me the clearance that I need for this build. If you've ever built one of Gank's models, you'll know that they're damn near indestructible. They take a bashing and keep on going. This build will include that. I am also going to be installing a Foxeer Nano Cam, uh, 1000 lines. You've all probably seen these, so that's nothing special. But this particular build is going to have the Rush Core. F7 flight controller. It'll also have the Mini Tank BL Heli 32 Matrix 30 amp ESC. And last but not least, it's going to have the Rush Mini Tank BTX. I believe that's 25 milliwatt. 200 milliwatt, 500 milliwatt, and 800 milliwatt of uh, transmitting power. And to go with, of course, we got the Rush style MMCX antennas, some bright yellow, neon yellow two bladed three inch props. Neon yellow prints from Matt Gankman, Gankman Multi Rotors. Excellent job, Matt. I really appreciate it. We're going to throw some color on this thing. Uh, because I'm kind of new to these small receivers, this receiver is, my apologies, first and foremost, FR Sky. And it's the XM Plus. The radio that I use is, of course, the Radio Master T16S. I do have an R9 module. I uh, come to find out it's the 2018 version with the ACCST rather than the Access, which has caused some problems for me. As soon as my resistors get here, I will be modding that to the Express LRS system. The motors are going to be the Robo 1204 5150 3 to 4S. I'll be flying this on, uh, of course, 3S. Nice little motors for what they are. Uh, quiet, efficient. Without further ado, uh, I'm going to cut here now, and when I come back, we're going to do the, the soldering. Happy o thrill o joy. Until then, stay tuned. All right, we're back. Got the old trusty blue tack out to hold the components. One of the better things since sliced bread. What I find is the easiest thing to do is not apply too much heat at any given time, but to make nice, nice solder joints. Use flux. There are different types of fluxes, as I'm sure you're all aware of. This is kind of like watching paint dry, I completely understand. Don't try to do this after drinking a bunch of Red Bull. Otherwise you'll 
probably screw things up if you're small if you're trying to solder small components I've been doing it for a while and I'm still learning how to solder so <clears throat> if at first you don't succeed try try again but I'll try to make this as painless as possible for everyone now you want good coverage on your pads you just don't want to have crap everywhere you don't more solder doesn't necessarily mean a better solder job sometimes less is more so what I'll do is I'll get these all soldered up here for the motors And then I go back and I clean my iron, a little bit of fresh flux. I want to leave just a little bit of, of flux on there because that's going to help, believe it or not, when I go to install those motor wires. Okay, that looks good there. That looks like good on there. You notice that I'm using a very fine tip as well. You don't need to use a big old iron. You just need for the heat to be distributed where and when you want it to be. So. Let me take this off of here and see if I can get a close-up of it for you. Okay, where the hell are you at? There you are. Will it focus? Further back, maybe? I don't fucking know. As you can see, none of them are bridged. I don't have solder where I don't want solder. Now on my last build using the Russia uh, light controller, I did not utilize the LED or the beeper. As you can see here now, I have a beeper. Long story short, I'll include it at the end of this uh, build. 30 seconds, 45 seconds after takeoff, lo and behold, I lost video and have yet to find my other HD nemesis using this very, very board. There. Just a little... Okay, which way are you at? Just a little bit of solder on those pads. All right, we'll be back. All right, sorry about that. There are only a couple more components to solder. Everything else is plug and play. The miracle, or the great thing about these boards, is that they have pins. So one board plugs into another board, and that plugs into another board. Now, I understand that the more you do that, the more chance of failure. But if you can direct solder, please do. The next thing is going to be the receiver wires. I'll uh, put this little plug on there, and then, of course, I'll... Twist it. You always want to twist your wires to help eliminate any any unwanted uh, or undesired interference. That's why uh, a lot of your electricians and your stuff like that will discuss twisted pairs. Okay, so let's put a little bit of solder on here. 
Again, I don't know how long this video is. I apologize. I do not want it to be too long because it's not that long of a build. Okay, so let's put a little bit of solder here. Good. A little bit of solder here. Good. And the yarn. Good. Okay, according to the destructions, the square is going to be my S bus, followed by the positive, followed by the ground on the outside. So, I want S bus, which is going to be on the red, yellow, and black. S bus is going to be my yellow, or my signal wire, however you want to call it. I just got to get some snips here real quick. Now these wires already come pre-tinned, but they come extra, extra long. And I don't like a lot of bare wire. The less bare wire, the better. Okay, so... We're going to solder this on here, and we are going to go to the S bus, which is again the center. Make sure we got her good. Good. And that is followed by the positive lead next to it. Good. And then the ground toward the outside. Good. All right. The next uh, phase in this video is going to be installing the board onto the frame. And uh, of course the prints and install the motors. So stay tuned. This is uh, again Frank Gordon from Chipetto's Lab with the one and only Gank Nemesis 3 inch HD frame with the Rush Core uh, flight control. We'll talk to you next time. And we're back. One thing that I like about the Gank Nemesis uh, HD frame as well as Man, so the frames is that parts are minimal. You've got your base plate here, which your motors and everything come to. You'll see some standoffs come in the bag here, and then a top plate. Other than that, it's just applying the prints and your flight controller of choice, your motors of choice. But without uh, further ado, there's one thing that uh, I'm looking at here. I did order this with 25 millimeter standoffs. And these are looking a little short. This is nothing against Matt. I'm sure he doesn't package every single thing himself. Let's see what we got here. Yep. I don't know if you can see that. Turn it around for you. 20s. But no problem. Because I've been doing quite a few of these builds. I purchased a bunch of these 25 millimeter standoffs. I like the black ones with the knurled, uh, knurled parts or knurled sides. So let's see what we got here. Verify that these are in fact 25. Okay. 24.97. Yeah, pretty close. Tolerances may vary. Okay. With that out of the way, we're going to set these aside. I really like the new 
motor mounts, uh, the end plates here. The carbon is always, uh, always great shape. So we got front, we got back. So let's see about mounting these things. The TPU, wonderful stuff for something like this. I, I'd really hate to try to do it with uh, PLA or something. You'd probably break everything. Make sure that seat's down in there and pinch her shut. She's good. Yep. That's how easy those puppies go on. Great job. Great job with the prints, Matt. Good. Squeeze it on there good. I'll uh, get this done and then I'll come back to you. And there's what she looks like with the prints. For some reason the song keeps popping in my head. Black and yellow, black and yellow. Oh well. I'm old school. But I think that's going to look pretty good with that. That camera on there and these props. Too bad my my antenna here wasn't that color. But I shouldn't have any problems finding it with the with the beeper now. The other uh, HD nemesis that uh, I just lost I don't know less than two weeks ago, about a week or so ago. Maiden Voyage with the new Rush Mini Tank. I got uh, about 150 feet out, about 50 feet up, and started getting snow, you know, in the video. So I'm, what I do, I clumb out a little bit, turned around to, to come back, and about five seconds later, is all she wrote, nothing but snow over top of... Uh, a hugely wooded area and apartment complex so it'll either be fall or nunca when I get that one back so just to make sure that it wasn't pilot error user error error I'm going to verify on the ground which is one thing that I didn't do I only set it up in beta flight was to make sure that it doesn't boot up in pit mode or that I am actually at about the 500 milliwatt setting and not uh, the 25 milliwatt setting. <laughs> that being said, the next phase of this build will be installing the uh, flight control. The ESC, the flight control, and then uh, we'll go on from there. Until then, take a break. I'm gonna have a smoke and a Coke here at Chipetto's lab and uh, we'll see you on the next segment. All right, and we are back with Chipetto's lab and the Gank Nemesis HD from Gank Multi Rotors. Matt Gankman, great model, man. As you can see, I've got the ESC and the capacitor and the plug soldered up. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but there's a good, good area beneath the ESC so it's not touching carbon. It's got little plastic or nylon standoffs in there. Blue tack on the bottom holds the screws in. A little secret. So you're not sitting there trying to hold shit like this and losing what you're trying to hold and dropping stuff. If you're like me and you wear glasses, the less that I have to get down on my knees to look for stuff, the better. 
So if I don't drop it in the first place, I have already won. All right, the next part of this whole deal is the flight controller. I don't know if you can see this, but there are pins here on this side and a receptacle on this side. Now, if you look here, it says plug and play. So that means that the pins go on that side. Yeah, no, yep. This right here will be for your camera right here, the single plug, followed by where your VTX plugs into it. And then on the back side, you'll see two plugs. The one on this side here is for your receiver. The one on the opposite side is for your LED strip should you choose to incorporate that into your drone. So carefully, without bending any pins, we're going to slip this down on here. Make every attempt anyways. future reference you can uh, install them together before putting the screws in but even in my older age I like to be uh, hard on myself I guess all right it's going down You don't want to press too hard, but it's flush, and I don't know if you can see that in there or not, but it is plugged in. Hot diggity. So what's left to do? The VTX. Part of the stack goes on top, followed by... Ah, see there? I was in a hurry and I forgot. Put you on hold for a second. It's got to come off of here. Easily. Nice and gentle. See, even us old dogs uh, we can learn new tricks. It's just uh, sometimes we just don't want to. This is a tight fit on those uh, I believe they're M2 screws. Okay. All right. That is off. There's four more of these little plastic nylon doohickeys that go in between the stack and the speed control. So. Now, let's try that again. Pins are all good. Okay, and how's that looking along there? You want to just guide those pins in. You don't want to force it. You just want it to seat nice and flush. There, it's back in. Again, you still have a lot of room. You can see daylight through there. 
beneath the ESC so you're not touching that carbon. Carbon's a good thing until it comes in contact with other electronic components and then everything goes to shit. Now, put that is back in. We'll start with the VTX. Again, this is the uh, tank mini. It goes uh, 25, 200, 500, and 800 milliwatts of power. I'm going to set this one up to 500 milliwatts and take it to the driving range where there are no trees, no obstacles of any type to test out video. If it goes to shit, I'll disarm and uh, well, we'll worry about that another day. Okay, open the top cover from here. Please open it carefully. Internal components are vulnerable. All right, so let's get underneath there. There we go, underneath. I don't know if you can see all that. One of the reasons why I like this Rush equipment is it, it all looks like it's already conformal coated. Now this is the lid. You can't see through there because of that sticker. So now that I've already removed it, I'm going to remove that sticker to try to give this thing some, some breathing room. I don't know if you can see that there. there. Now you can see through it. Get some airflow going to it. Been in this well, you know that your VTX is uh, one hot potato. And then this has four pins that again will plug into right there next to your camera bleed. At least that way, you know we know which way is front, which way is back, and make sure she's seated on there good. It is. Remember earlier in the build, I had mentioned uh, that I wanted 25 millimeter standoffs. Well, I don't know if you can see here now, but with the 20 millimeter standoffs, put this top plate here, I wouldn't have had too much room. Now I've got plenty of room for battery straps, you know, anything else. Plus, uh, it keeps everything else away from the carbon and uh, gives the ultimate airflow. I mean, what's five millimeters vertical when it can save you, you know, a down drone? All right, well, other than putting this cap on that have four little nuts here, the next part is going to be going to beta flight and installing motors and checking motor direction and my UARTs and everything like that. So until then this is Frank Gordon Spettles Lab with the Gank Nemesis HD 3 inch with Rush Mini Tank Stack and VTX. See you next time. Alright welcome back to Spettles Lab. In the last segment, I said that we'd be heading toward the computer uh, for beta flight. Well, I'd like to have the motors installed by then, so don't shoot me just yet. Again, these are the Robo 1204s. Just little guys, but uh, they pack a punch. Uh, again, 5150 kV. 3 to 4S capable. Uh, some of mine have a 2 millimeter shaft. These have the 1.5 millimeter shaft. I don't do a lot of racing or anything like that, but I do love to fly. I do love a uh, little bit of freestyle. Uh, more of a cinematic type flyer, but uh, these have the, like I say, the power to, to do some of that uh, fancy schmancy stuff. So, let's see what we can find here. If you all want to skip forward to the next segment, feel free. I'm sure you've all installed a motor or two before. 
but for those that haven't, I will uh, keep rolling. I like to start one and then another. Now a lot of people, especially your racers and stuff like that, to my knowledge, they'll only put a couple of these on here. A couple screws to, to hold the motor that way they are able to uh, swap them out quite quick. You know, should they damage a bell or, or a shaft or something like that. But for, like I say, the flying that I do, it comes with four. I'll install four. You know, I come from flying helicopters and uh, never, never, unless you know what you're doing, and using the appropriate stuff over tighten or use Loctite on aluminum. Again, I'm not saying don't do it, but you're not wanting to smear all those threads with Loctite. It's the last one or two threads is more than enough. You'll find real quick that if you just soak this thing in Loctite and screw it on up in there, if you ever have to try to replace it, you're going to be in a world of hurt. And for these little, little guys, I don't use any Loctite whatsoever. I built enough of them. I know how tight is tight. I've never had a motor come off or a motor come loose, but I've always been able to remove a motor should I needed to. So, yeah, everybody has their way of doing things. And everybody's right in their own mind. So take what I say with a grain of salt. For those of you out there that have built the A-Gank multi-rotors model, what are your opinions? Personally, uh, I've enjoyed every one that I have purchased and built and flown. So... I'd like to hear what everybody else has got to say as well. A little bit looser, a little bit looser, just to get that fourth screw in. There we go. <clears throat> now, of course, uh, when I solder these leads, these motor leads up, I'm sure you're all well aware that... Uh, at one time, your motor was spinning the opposite direction than what you needed. You just swap any two wires. But now, to uh, thanks to our BL Heli Suite and such other programs, perhaps we no longer have to do that. We just go in there and say, "Hey, this motor is turning the other way." Hit save and. Voila. Boy, I love it when things are easy. Well, most things. Feel free to uh, leave any comments uh, regarding this video and any of the information that I may or may not give. I'm open to criticism, good or bad, constructive or de destructive. I don't have thin skin. Been around the block more than once. Little thing about us here at Chapetto's Lab, uh, we do a little bit of everything. And as a full-time job, I'm a handyman. So, I do electrical, I do plumbing, I do construction. 
uh, I build, I troubleshoot, I diagnose, and uh, I repair. And then at the end of the day, give me a nice cold brew and a, a good meal, and I'm ready to go the next day. I've been into uh, into the radio control or the model aviation part of the hobby for 46 years. I started when I was eight years old. I'm 54 now, evidently. I'll be 55 this uh, this fall. And uh, I've been into rubber powered aircraft, which is how I got started. Then into electric free flight, gas free flight, nitro, gas, JTEX, and uh, turbine. I've got my turbine waiver. And then, of course, I do buggies and truggies and boats and ROVs and UAVs and any, any, anything aspect of the hobby. I used to race uh, on-road series cars, uh, Bull Link, if any of you are familiar with that. Used to soldering up my old NICAD packs. Woohoo! That was fun. Smelling glycerin and green soap and dope covering models. But let me tell you, I've learned a lot, and I continue to learn every day, which is why I do this FPV thing. There's a reward to it that is hard to explain, as you all know, but that's uh, evident. There's nothing like sitting there or standing there throwing on a set of goggles there's nothing like flying period i mean it almost in one sense makes you feel invincible makes you feel like you're able to touch the hand of god so So that's tight enough there. That's tight enough there. We'll go back through these and make sure they're tight enough. And then I'll solder it up. But I won't record the soldering. You've already seen the pads that I tend and, and got going. So One secret. Do not cut your wires too short. You can always shorten them. It's a pain in the ass and it looks uglier than sin when you have to lengthen them. Leave a little bit of play because you don't want tension on them. All right. Now it's the big hairy mess here. And as you can see, I've got ample amount of wire. I, I can cut half of that off. But what I'll do is I'll... Uh, install these guys that, that cover the wire and a few zip ties prior to any trimming and I always the closest lead that I need I cut that at next to or give it another three quarters of an inch in other words, I don't know if you can see this in here, but let's say I needed this first pad. I'm going to cut it at the third or even fourth pad in length. I'd always like to have a little extra than not enough. All right, until this time, uh, till we hook this thing up to beta flight. This is Frank Gordon with Chapitals Lab. Again, with the Gank Multi-Rotors, Gank Nemesis HD 3-inch. Stay tuned. All right, gang. This is Frank Gordon's Petals Lab. Back with the 
Gank Nemesis HD 3 inch freestyle frame with the Rush Core 7 flight system, the Rush Mini Tank VTX, the 32 bit uh, BL Heli uh, 30 amp ESCs. I believe it's looking a little sweet there. Uh, a couple of things to mention. Number one, due to the uh, current purchase of the FR Sky XM Plus receiver, I did have to reflash this receiver with the uh, legacy firmware, the older firmware. And then it bound fine. Everything works good in beta flight. The next thing to mention is that I installed the VTX table uh, via the CLI tab in Betaflight and you know did the save and reboot and everything and went in and I, I fly Fat Shark. So I went in, I set for Fat Shark, I set for channel five, I set for five hundred milliwatt, yada yada. Save and reboot, it did its thing. I went and uh, plugged in a LiPo and uh, lo and behold, it's at boss cam A. So I went through the OSD by using uh, the stick method, you know, the throttle up halfway and to the left while pitch forward went in there went down through my OSD menu through smart audio and I set it up just as I did in beta flight fat shark channel 5 500 milliwatt and I turned pit mode off I I fly alone I I don't fly with anybody I don't need this low to no video no noise nothing like that I if I wanted to go at 800, plugging it in, that's what I can do. But uh, I just wanted to let you know that even though you make changes in beta flight, save and reboot, they do not always take effect on the flight controller or the VTX. So if you ever have the chance, go through the OSD using the stick method, direct route, Get the proper LED readout along the sides if you need to find that. Uh, I don't do much business through Banggood anymore, but Banggood actually has a decent manual with all the the work throughs and the LED meanings and, and everything else with this, whereas Rush only gives you a wiring diagram and nothing else. Great product. I just wish uh, for some of the newer people it was uh, a little more self-explanatory. Okay, so all that's left to do to the Rush Gank Nemesis HD is to add the top plate. Again, verify motor direction by going through beta flight, hooking up a LiPo. You've all done it before. And uh, once everything is good there, installing the props and taking it out for a test. So stay tuned.
All right, guys, Frank Gordon, Chipetto's Lab. I'm back from the field. Had a uh, test flight. Wasn't nothing fancy, as you've all seen. But uh, some final remarks on the Gank Multi Rotors, Gank Nemesis 3D or 3 inch HD version that. Uh, I'm claiming the Bumblebee. It's a wonderful flying mini quad. I mean, I plan on doing a lot of freestyle with this. Uh, but before doing so, I want to make sure that, that Rush Mini Tank VTX uh, is set right. I think it's a pain in the ass to have to go into the OSD and switch it from one frequency to another to another channel to another power setting every time there's got to be a way i've gone through beta flight i've gone through the osd saved rebooted saved rebooted saved exited yada 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 i mean if i can use the buttons once to set it and forget it great but if i have to set it every time i boot it up it, 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 that, you know, would be a pain in the ass for me. Pardon my French. But, needless to say, it took me about, uh, about three hours to build this. Nice clean layout, I think. Uh, the stack fits in there between the 25 millimeter standoffs just fine. Motors have, uh, adequate power to do some, uh, freestyle. Again, I was just cruising there, uh, the battery that I used was a Lumineer uh, 550, and I believe it's only got like a 70C rating or something like that. Uh, I plan on using other batteries that I have here with uh, close to 100C rating, 650 size packs. They're a little bit different, a little bit shorter, uh, but they offer a little bit more punch, a little bit more gas in the tank. But all in all, I cannot complain. Um, it is a wonderful model. They fly like a dream. You can take them out and bash them. Check out gankmultirotors.com. There's more than just a little three inch guy. But all of the products are, uh, are top notch. Second to none and, uh, Keep them flying. Send it.